Hey everyone, I've got a pretty basic landscape here. I have set up an auto material on it that calculates whether or not it's a cliff, and based on the height, it'll either spawn snow or sand. And then based on whether or not it's snow or sand, I'm going to spawn these rocks or these clear statues. And I've also added in a painted layer that I can use for a road, and if you follow my previous tutorial, you'll learn how to uh, treat the painted layer to either you know create edges for it or whatever else you want to do with the painted layer. And so this creates a very quick, very um, convenient effect that you can use to very, very quickly populate landscapes. So if you just you know, paint out here, you get some pretty quick new landscape data. And it, as you can see, just updates on the fly based on <laughs> what you've done with the land. So uh, yeah, let me show you how to do it. All right, I've sculpted up a basic new world. Let me create the material. Material, M underscore auto material. And I'm going to just uh, whip this up pretty quickly. Start with the texture sample and make four copies of that. Three will be the auto material and one will be a painted layer. All right, so the first one, sandstone. Second one is going to be sand. Third one is going to be snow. And last one is going to be concrete. And let me add a little scaling to this. I'll take the texture coordinate and just multiply it by 0.01 so it doesn't have some extreme tiling. Just plug those into the UVs. All right, and now a landscape layer blend. I'm going to have two layers. The first one's going to be auto. Second one is going to be concrete. And I'll plug concrete into concrete, and auto I need to calculate. So for auto, I'm going to start off with a world aligned blend, and this will let me create the cliff. I'll just toss up to scalers. 15 is going to be sharpness, and negative 5 is going to be bias. Just hook them straight on up. Since I'm just whipping this up for demo purposes, I'm not going to worry about making these parameters. And now the alpha is going to connect to a linear interpolate, a lerp node. And I'll hook that up to alpha. And so the closer it is to zero, the more A is going to get. And that's going to be my sandstone. And then I can hook that up to the auto layer. And now I need to determine if it is sand or snow. So for that, I will add a world position coordinate, and I'm going to calculate based on the z. First, I will subtract a scalar that's going to be the height where the difference happens, and I'll say 3500, and now I'll clamp it from 0 to 1. So if it's below 3500, it's going to be 0. And now I'll calculate the blending range. So all I have to do for that is divide this number, which goes from 3,500 on up, by 500. Then 0 to 1 will be the equivalent of 3,500 to 4,000, and I can clamp it at 1. And this is the lerp for this one. And so the closer it is to 0, the more it is sand. And the closer it is to 1, the more it is snow. And I can just hook that right up here and hook this on up. And if I apply this to the landscape, M underscore auto material. Let's go into the paint tool. Shift 2 to pull up the landscape menu, and auto and concrete need layer info. So let me just create a weight blended layer for each of them. Weight blended layer for concrete. And there we go. We've got 
our snow, we've got our sand, uh, sandstone, it's hard to tell because it's extremely bright right now, but let me quickly paint a little bit here, uh, yeah, 0.5 works, do, 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 do. painted some concrete on down, and let's fix this shininess, so I'm going to create two more scalars, just hold down one and left click, and metallic I'm going to make a zero, and roughness I'm going to make one. And I think I selected the wrong texture for sandstone. There we go. Canyon sandstone is what I want. There, that's a little more visible. Okay, great. So we've got our sand, our sandstone, our snow, and our concrete. So next, let's apply a physical material, and that's what we're going to sample. So for that, physical material output. And I'll have four values, one for each type. And now I need to create a physical material. And before I create a physical material, I need to update the physics project settings and add an entry for each different physical material. So I'll have sandstone, sand, snow, and concrete close that, and I can create my physical materials. Let's go into PCG Auto Material, and I'm going to right-click, go to Physics, Physical Material, select Physical Material, and hit OK. First one will be PM Sandstone, duplicate that, PM underscore Snow, duplicate that, PM underscore Sand, and duplicate that for PM underscore Concrete. I can open each one of them up, and now I'll select my surface type that I just created in the project settings. And I'm just going to match the tab headers here. So sandstone, sand, and the last one's going to be concrete. And now for the physical material, I'll select PM underscore sandstone, PM underscore sand, PM underscore snow, and PM underscore concrete. Okay, so now I need to assign these physical materials. So concrete's going to be easy. I'll select landscape layer sample and set it to concrete. And this will just return a value from 0 to 1 based on how much concrete is painted on the, on the position. For the other one, I'm going to select Auto, but Auto splits into one of three different properties. So for that, I need to basically rebuild this LERP logic. So if I take the World Aligned Blend, which is creating my cliff face, the closer it is to zero, the more A it is. And A is my value that I'm using for sandstone. So if I lerp from one to zero based on alpha, I get my sandstone value. And then I just have to multiply that by auto to combine its, to combine its weight with concrete, and I've got sandstone. And let me just name this one right here, sandstone. And I'm going to take this and reverse it, so A is 0, B 1, hook up the alpha, and this will be not sandstone. So not sandstone is going to plug into snow versus sand, and it will use the same lerp from the absolute world position. So I need two of these, one for snow, one for sand. And sand, the closer this value is to A, the more it's sand. So I'll go from 1 to 0 for sand and name this sand. And 0 to 1 will be snow. And I apologize for the ugliness and disorganization here. So if it is sand, I multiply it by not sandstone, and then I multiply that by auto. And that's going to be my weight of sand. 
This isn't perfect. Concrete actually gets weighted a little over what it should be, but it's going to be close enough for these purposes. And if you want any more details on how to create physical materials and auto layers, you should look up another tutorial that's focused on those because they will go into far greater detail and give you a far better result than what this is giving you. All right, so I should have my physical materials now. Let's uh, create a tool to test that. Blueprint, actor, bp underscore debug fizz mat, and open it up. For this, I'm just going to go into the construction script, and this will be just pretty quick and dirty. I'm going to do a line trace by channel, and we'll actually use this line trace by channel for the PCG graph, but for now, we're just uh, doing some testing stuff with it. Get actor location is going to be the start and end of this line trace. For the start, I'm going to add let's say 10,000, just to make it ridiculously big. And for the end, I'm going to subtract 10,000. Trace channel, I suggest setting it to camera. It seems to work a bit better in the editor. And let's draw some debug lines for the duration. Out hit, I'm going to get the surface type and cast it to a string. And then I'm going to just do a print string. And that's all we need for debug purposes. Compile, save, drag it out into the world. And we see sand, concrete, sandstone, and snow. So that's exactly what we want to see. You can go ahead and delete this, and we're done with that debug tool. Next, let's go ahead and create the PCG graph. PCG. Auto material, open that up, and a blueprint. BP underscore fizz material. And for this, I'm going to add a spline and a PCG. The spline, I'm going to go ahead and expand it a little bit. Let's move this a little off of center and make it a closed loop, the PCG. Let me go ahead and select that PCG underscore auto material, compile, save, and I should be able to drag this out into the world. Let's uh, go right here. We should see all the materials right here. I can make it a little tiny bit bigger. There we go. Okay, now let's go into the PCG. I'm going to get spline data, and I'll have it set to actor filter self. The spline and the PCG are in the same blueprint, so this will find the spline. Spline sampler. And I'm going to set the spline sampler to distance on interior. And the interior sample spacing, let's set it up a little bit for development purposes. And now I can do a projection node. I'll project the landscape to it, line all that up. And here is where I'm going to sample the physical material. So I need a new node for that. Blueprint, all classes, PCG blueprint, element. I'll call this PCGB underscore fizz mat. And now I can open this up. All right, I'm going to first override the node title. And I'm going to call this fizzmat. And now I'm going to expose to the library and set the category at custom. Description, get the physical material. And there we go. Now I'll update the execute with context. I'm going to first promote context to a variable. Just call it context and hook that up. Now I'm going to break the input and add a for each loop. Hook that on up. Break the PCG tagged data. 
from the for each loop. And when it's completed, I'm going to do this return node. The PCG tagged data I will cast to PCG spatial data. And the PCG spatial data will be two point data with context. Hook the context up. And this is going to go into a point loop with another reference to context here. And then the point loop is going to go out into a make PCG tagged data. Let's make an array. I'll promote this array to variable. And delete that, and now I'm going to take this array and add this value to the array. And let's rename this array PCG tagged data. And now on the return node, I'll take this PCG tagged data and I will make a PCG data collection and I'll pass that out in the return node. Okay, and we've got our execute with context, so let's create a point loop. Alright, for the point loop, I'm going to promote point to a local variable. I'll call it point, and let me hook it on up, and promote the metadata to a local variable, metadata. And hook that on up too. Now I will take point, and I will break it. I only want the transform. I don't need all the rest of these properties, so I'm just going into break PCG point and unselecting everything here. And let me break the transform. And for location, I will add and subtract from location just like I did in the debug node. And here I will do a line trace by channel. Hook that on up. And the start will be adding from the location and subtracting from the location. And instead of simply adding values to the z axis, I'm going to rotate a vector. And that vector is going to be 0, 0, 1. And I'm going to rotate it by the rotation. And then this I will multiply by a float. Convert this to float. And let's just do 500. So I'll add 500 to the start and subtract 500 from the end. And this means that if the point has been projected onto the landscape and rotated, it will still point straight into the landscape, which I find makes it a little more accurate in some strange edge cases. All right, draw debug type. Let's start off with drawing the debug type and set the visibility, the trace channel to camera. The out hit, I'm going to get surface type and make this a string. And the string, I'm going to add into metadata. I'm going to set string attribute to this return value. Attribute name is going to be is mat. The point is going to be point, and I'll hook this on up. Set the out point to point as well. Line these on up, and check return value. And now I need to actually go and create the metadata. So back in the execute with context, after two point data with context, I'm going to add mutable metadata. And I'm going to create a string on that mutable metadata. And that's going to be called fizzmat. And I need to hook all of this up. So let me move all of this over a little bit. And I'll add a sequence node here. And first, 
I will hook up the mutable metadata, and then I'll hook up the point loop. Okay, and now this should be getting me the values that I need. Let's find out. I've got my FISMAT graph in here, and if I inspect this and select FIS material, FISMAT, concrete, sand, sandstone, snow. Perfect, that's exactly what I want to see. And if I move this, we should see the line traces. There we go. Next, let's uh, add some stuff to this thing based on that. So I'm going to do a point filter. And if FISMAT is equal to constant threshold string, uh, let's say if it's equal to sand, let's do one thing, and pipe the outside filter in for things that aren't equal to sand, and this will be snow. And I'll just ignore cliff, and for now I'll also ignore concrete. So let's see if it's equal to sand. Let's do a static mesh spawner. And I'm going to select mesh entry. Rock. And for the snow, let me select the mesh entry. Statue. All right, we got some statues, but they're very tiny. So let's make them a little larger. I'll just add a transform points. Hook that up in here. And add a transform points here and hook them up here. The rocks, let's just uh, make sure they're uniform scale and set them from, let's say, 2 to 4. These things, 10 to 15 for the statues. And let's see what we got. OK, the statues are more visible, similar size to the rocks. Excellent. And I can expand this a tiny bit. And you'll notice something's weird's happening. Every other time, and I can just drag this over here, and I'll click the Force Regen button. Gone. Force Regen is there. So what's happening is every other regen, this trace is colliding with these statues. And I can tell you right now that it's not colliding with the rocks because the rocks don't actually have any collision. This is a new project. If I went into the rock static mesh and oh, I just do that now. Start a content, props, SM rock, and I'll just uh, generate a simple collision here and save. And back under here, now if I regen, <laughs> They're alternating. Oh, that's excellent. OK, so how do I fix this? Well, let's add a little more debugging into the PCG Blueprint. Point loop body. I'm going to take the out hit and break it. And I'll expand the break hit result. And under hit actor, I'm going to find the name. And I find that the object path string gives me the most information. And now I'm going to log string. And I'll just drop this into the loop, compile, save. And so now if I open the output log, let's see what we've got. Landscape streaming proxy, that's what I want to be hitting. But here we go, BP underscore fizz material. So it's hitting itself, and the objects that it's hitting are tagged as BP fizz material. So to fix this, what I'm going to do is add actors to ignore. So let's do that now. Let me get rid of this logging. It's told me what I need to know. So let's uh, promote this to a variable. I'll just leave it named actors to ignore. Compile, and let's add an actor. I can't because uh, it's not letting me do it 
in a class itself. I could do it if I create it as a variable and set it once it was in the world, but it won't let me create it from the blueprint itself. But I can actually handle that in a slightly different way. I'm going to add an ignore list variable, type actor, but actor is going to be a class reference. And let me change this to an array. And now if I compile this, I can add my class references like BP underscore fizzmaterial. A couple others you might want to add are static mesh, PCG volume, and I've even found uh, instanced foliage actor can also cause problems when you've painted foliage the trace will impact that as well. So now I've got these, I need to do something with these ignore list values. So back in the execute with context, I'll just do it once for the whole node and I can do it right here. So let's move this return node down here and drag the ignore list in. I'm gonna do for each loop on the ignore list and now I can create a sequence to pipe up to the for each loop, zero will be the for each loop, and one will be once it's completed. So I'm going to run through the ignore list, and I will get all actors of class, which gives me another array. This, I'm going to do another for each loop, and that gives me my individual actors I want to ignore. So I can simply add to this array and that is going to provide me my ignore list. Compile, save, and we've got the stuff we want. If I click on regen, it still works. Okay, so now we've got everything working. So let me turn off this debug turn off the draw debug type to none, compile save, and let me show you how to add in the road. Close all of this stuff that I don't need anymore, and open up the auto material. And so for the road, we have a projection node earlier on in this graph, so we have the layer data. And so we see here concrete is populated, as well as auto. So what I'm going to do is break this point filter and add another point filter, because the concrete data is more accurate than the physical material, because concrete can go uh, on a gradient between 0 and 1, whereas the physical material is just, yes, it's concrete, yes, it's sand, it's it's just a fixed value. So now I'll say if concrete constant threshold is greater than let's say float 0.5, we'll do something with that, otherwise we'll go here. And now a uh, static mesh spawner, and let's just add, let's add some bushes to the road. Save and there we go, we got our little bits of bushes on the road. And if I expand that, everything is auto-populating. Let me just uh, crank this down a little bit more, make it 2000, and if I draw on this landscape, if I sculpt everything now, I can crank it up, I can flatten it, and I've got these things populating on the flattened landscape, and there we go. So I hope you do some interesting things with it. It definitely is a huge time saver. It gets you really close where you need to go, and then you can uh, tweak from there. All right, enjoy.